Hey, I'm back. Max8 tutorial number 34, audio to video to audio to video, and back. Sort of a rock, scissors, paper of effects. Um, when last we left, I'm going to refer you back to tutorial number 33. We had uh, this lovely thing that could um, play some music. Let me turn that up a little. And it could play a movie. And then uh, I forgot to turn the metro on here, but when the metro's on, it starts making this. And then we get some of this action going here. Um, I'm sorry, these are all set to pass. Let's uh, try something more exciting. There we go. So, so then we get... Uh, some nice action going on here. And the question arises, wait a minute, is there any way to make video into audio? Hmm, well, turning all this stuff off, yes, there is, and we are going to do it. But in order to do it, I want to get rid of the um, pesky uh, audio that comes out of here. So we're going to change this object so that we have so that we have purity on our hands for crying out loud. Um, so we're going to uh, type a J and uh, uh, you get the JIT object and type movie with a tilde. There it is. JIT movie with a tilde. And we could just say um, at movie file crash test dot mov oh, mov not mox there we go and um, it may just work we don't know but we'll take this off of here stick it on there whoops What did I just get rid of? Ah, there we go. The uh, command Z. Oh, of course, they're audio. Hello. If you're going to take the video off something, don't put it on the audio files. You have to put it on the video. There we go. It's the third one over. And then we'll do the same with this and make sure that it actually plays. And then we'll get rid of this thing here and instead get a play bar. And boink. let's just make sure this works. It is working. So great. If we wanted the audio from this, we could get it from here. But at the moment we don't. We just want everything to run. Now, now that we don't have that audio coming out of there, um, we can um, go back to the idea of trying to get a sound out of this, uh, this result here. And the object that we use for that um, is called peak. So let's type a J and then type peak. There it is. Hello, JIT peak. And then after the peak, we need to have it peak into a matrix, but we don't want it to peak into catchy. We need to come up with a new, completely unique matrix, which we will call patchy. And then, um, we're going to type letter uh, type uh, two and two. That's uh, two inlets and uh, two outlets, I guess. I don't know. And then we're going to do the thing that we really love to do, which is we're going to option click on this and get the help file because they have a very cool way of. Um, I'm sorry. That's inputs and plane count. I could not figure out what the second two was for. I just couldn't remember. Um, so 
they have this very cool thing here that uh, sends signals into both um, inlets of the peak and we are just going to steal them and I'll explain them as we go. So we can, whoop, we don't actually need the peak so we'll just put it on our own peak there. Okay, so get all this stuff up here, X and Y coordinates optional, copy it, close it, goodbye, and then um, hopefully you'll be able to pa uh, paste it over here. Here it is, uh, pasted, and um, connect the bottom of uh, multiply signal by three, 320 to, uh, to the left inlet, and signal 0 to the right inlet. So what are we doing here? We've made a JIT peak, sorry, we have to make a, a, a matrix, and it, it will then all make complete sense. So type a J again, type matrix, and then type um, patchy. So as with other max objects, patchy um, is now associated by name to JIT peak. You remember a matrix is where you hold your memory, much like a buffer is for, for, um, for music waves. So now we just have to decide uh, how many planes it has. And uh, let's stick with four, just like catchy. Four, float 32 is the kind of number that we're going to use, though it may be overkill. And then we're going to make it the same size, 320 by 240. Okay, so these are the dimensions. This is the kind of number we're going to use, a float 32. That's a number between 0 and 1 as a decimal, probably with up to 30, 32 uh, spaces behind the decimal. Four planes, and the name's Patchy. Okay, and what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to take the video output of this and run it over to this matrix where it will go inside and sit there. And when it's there, JIT peak is going to peak inside. And what's it going to do when it peaks inside? Well, it's um, actually, I'm going to switch the places here. Uh, how can I do it? Move this over here for a second and move all you guys over here because I'm just running out of room. Okay. And then I'm going to move this back and then I'll tell you another cool, oh no, I like that all the way around. Um, you can also just uh, highlight a chord and hit Command Y, probably Control Y, I don't know, on a PC, and that puts it into a a sort of a rectilinear form that makes some sense sometimes. Okay, so what happens here? A phaser um, runs slowly from 0 to 1, or even not so slowly, at the speed that you tell it to right here. This is a floating point, so if I tell it 1 once per second, it'll go from 0 to 1. But we need it to go across, because what peak is going to do is sample, like it's going to go bzzz, like this, all the way across 320 different pixels, and it's going to read them, and how far up or down the screen, in other words, the line up here or down here, is going to depend on what signal we feed it here. So anything between 0 and 240 should stay on this grid. And then the output is going to come out a speaker, so we need a new EasyDAC. So let's uh, type the letter N, type EasyDAC, and there it is. And then you know, <clears throat> I'm going to stick two live gains on this. Type an L, gain, there it is, click. Here's one for this, and we left hand outlet to left hand inlet, and, oops, I'm sorry, there's only one channel out, and to the right hand inlet, and left to left inlet of the easy DAC, and then second to left, be careful, to the right hand inlet of the easy DAC. Great. So now JIT peak is reading 
absolutely nothing because these are set at zero, right? And then also there's nothing in the matrix yet because we're not yet running. And there is one more thing that, um, oh, that's what I wanted to do. Stop that, stop that everybody. Whoops. I said I was gonna put two gains on here. I knew I had forgotten something. So we'll just duplicate this one. Uh, on a Mac, that's option click, not 100. You know, we don't have to use all, all these easy decks go the same place. So you can just wire them together if you want to. So same thing, the outputs of this, and the second to the left goes to the right. And then I just wanted to be able to uh, take the sound out of JIT movie if I wanted to. Because they sort of go together, you know. And then in the other inlet, there we go. All right, so we've got our movie running. We should be able to hear it. Oh, because I, I have my computer's volume turned down. Okay, so now we can turn that down and not listen to it too much. And then we start our metronome, we start our audio file playing. And we can play that, turn that down a little bit too. And check it, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Hear that, here, I'll turn down the, this is only from peak now. It's reading, it's reading the zero level on this file. So let's uh, turn this up a little bit and say, so now it's reading it um, 24 times per second. And now we're gonna set the horizontal band that it's gonna go across. Now, it's pretty interesting that Jongly has that certain sound of ch -ch -ch, and since it's getting converted by catchy, excuse me, by catch into a video signal, Peak reads that same signal the same way. So it just sort of, it sounds very similar, but also a little weird. So uh, putting them together, you can just hear how similar they are. And then, um, of course, we have the sound of a jongly coming, uh, not jongly, of crash test. I like it. I like it. So there you go. That's that is technically right here. You have video making sound. Now, um, if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, if you wanted to, of course, you don't need sound to become video to become sound. You could just be playing this. And if we stop Jongly and um, uh, actually scrub through this, we can actually read it. Um, what is it not doing, though? Oh, we're not getting the... Uh, Oh, um, we're, we don't have all the planes um, interacting in the same way, so they might be equal to zero. So let's uh, just go through here and uh, um, reverse pass them till we figure out which one it is. Uh, the uh, exclamation point pass means you're passing the left side in favor of the right. Exclamation points usually means uh, backwards. There it is. So this one wasn't getting anything through there, and it's listening to that. So now we've got it reading this music, uh, this stuff again. So there we go. So now it's a. Uh, now we have the full video coming through, he coming through here through the JIT op and being read into Patchy. I'm going to turn that down a little bit because it's going to drive us crazy. And then we can pick the line that we want to read here. And this is how many times we'd be reading it. So when we turn it down, of course, you get a lower rate. 
And if you get tired of listening to it, besides just turning the volume down, you can just go down to zero. So, there we go. Okay, so we're reading this one now. Um, so, there you go. You can, you can, <laughs> shh, quiet. Okay, so we have done what we have set out to do, which is we can convert video. Um, we've converted audio into video. We've run video that was made out of audio with regular video, run that into a single video, and converted it back into audio. And we can also just take the video and convert that directly into audio. And is there any other thing we haven't done? Yes, I suppose you're right. It is true. If only we could then take an effect and drive it with the audio, which would then get read by um, this matrix uh, patchy to output even more audio. I like it. It's a little crazy, but let's go ahead and try it. Um, you may remember that we used average before or um, AVG, and uh, so let's unlock our patcher here. Um, and, you know, we could be completely insane and run <laughs> the audio out of peak in through average and drive an effect that way, but I'm worried that something might blow up. So I'm just going to stick with Jongly here and uh, let's make our new object. It's uh, AVG tilde. And you may recall that it needs a metronome, but lo and behold, up here we have a metronome. So we get the metronome running there, we get the sound coming from here. And then uh, we put a float out here to see what we get. If you have, if if you'd like to go back and refresh your memory about this, it was um, tutorial number thirty-one or thirty-two. I can't remember thirty-one or thirty-two. Anyway, um, and then because um, here I'll just lock it and hit play. Um, we only get uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 0.1 here, so we have to we have to scale it up. I'll just turn that down to keep us company for a while. So um, we need a scale object, and I usually start out with 0 0.0, 0 1.0 for the inputs. And then for the output 0.0, .0 space 1.0, those are the things that you're putting out. Those are the range, and those are ranges that we often use in Jitter, though they may not be perfect for what we're planning to do. So we connect this in that outlet. We put another uh, little uh, type F. You get another float, and we'll see what we get here. And we're going to put another float up here. This is how we did it last time. What we did was we adjusted the high input for what we expected. Like if this is only getting up to 0.1 or 0.2, then we make the high input 0.1 or 0.2 so we can get a full one out of it or, you know, whatever we want. So I'm going to connect this to high input value. And then um, of course, we don't know what effect we're using yet, so we don't know what number we need. So what effect should we use? Let's, uh, let's take uh, the car crash scene here and try out a uh, uh, type of J, and we'll try rotating it, because wouldn't, wouldn't that make a lot of sense? OK, so JIT rotate. And then what we can do is as we slide it to the left, just hold the shift key down and it should light up and click right in there. There we go. So now we've got our JIT rotate in there. And um, I can save you the trouble or not, but JIT rotate um, likes to uh, the number that tells you how it rotates. Well, let's come over here and look at reference. And that is... Uh, theta. 
I was just scrolling down here. You can send it all kinds of different things, but theta is the rotation angle in radians. Goodness me. So um, we'll just see what works. Hopefully a float will work, um, and that will rotate uh, this around. But since we know that the word has to be theta, we know the message we have to send it then. Uh, type M for message, type theta, string 1. Okay, so theta string 1, and hmm, messy. How to get through there. Okay. And so my guess is that we are also going to need, um, you don't really want to go down to zero all the time when you're running the uh, phaser, because that's what we're going to drive with this. Uh, it's, um, no, we're going to drive rotate. Yeah, we could go down to zero all the time. It doesn't really matter. Okay, well, just fine. Um, so we're going to connect this up and see what it starts doing. Um, I'll have to play the crash test. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, it's nice. It's nice. So if we, uh, whoops, roll it up to about 0.3. Oh, yeah. Good looking, right? So now um, if we go ahead, we've got our metro running there. We've got this going on. And oh, I, I've turned it down. Here's what it sounds like. So now it's going to be skimming through there, but we're not adding in any of Jongly, which will also get scanned then too. So here we go. That's the nice uh, background. I kind of wish it would drive that instead. Maybe we could get it to do that. Um, I think we could. Um, I'm going to say uh, we want a, a baseline level, so let's say I'm gonna, I better turn that down while I'm working. Whoops. Locking patcher, turning down. Okay, here we go. Here's our new object, unlocking our patcher. And we're just going to say uh, plus 20, because we don't want to start anywhere under 20 with the phaser. It'll just sound ridiculous. So, whoops, I didn't put a space in there. Plus 20.0. And then um, we're going to multiply this by we don't know what yet. So let's type new uh, times. Eh, 10.0. We put the points in there so that it makes sure that it stays afloat. Okay, so whatever this number is, we're going to multiply it by 10, then we're going to add it to 20 and send it to the phaser, and we'll just see if we can sooner or later blow everything up. All the way over there to the phaser. Oh yeah, this should be good. Okay, so here we go. Now the phasers, whoops, locking our patcher again. And then, uh, opening these things up to more possibilities. <laughs> hey, there you go. And then we can even uh, bring in our other sound. Yeah, so take a look at that. It's really uh, all over the place there. And of course, um, we could adjust that by um, scaling this number down or up a little bit. And I imagine now that it's twisting like that, that we would find um, that the uh, 
the Y value would make a lot of difference. So let's see what it is closer to the bottom, which is would be about 240. Uh, you, you read it this way from 0 to 240 for the for the y value I like it I like it all right well write to me let me know um, how long it took you to melt your computer and uh, you know have a good time uh, making audio into video and video into audio and making making it back again. So there you go, Timbuktu to Kalamazoo and back. That's all I've got time for today or all I can think of doing. So have fun, enjoy patching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.